Maybe he needs some more action. Uh, why did I make that? No wonder I lost my DSI. Oh, my eyes! My adult eyes! Oh, this is the worst second day ever. Can something good not be ruined for me for once? Oh, the last thing I needed was to be reminded of that thing. No wonder Jack Six returned my DSi. He wanted me to rediscover it. Oh, my channel is over now. There's nothing I could do to come back from this. No, there is one possible thing I could do, but it would require me to fill you in on everything. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I can't make any more videos if I don't. This is a necessary sacrifice. Alright. I guess it's time to tell you all the tale of Race the Hedgehog. I needed to add that pause in. The dramatic effect wouldn't work otherwise. Race the Hedgehog, a name I was hoping I wouldn't ever have to utter on this channel. One that I was earnestly praying wouldn't find its way back to me. This name belongs to a character of my creation that was a blight on the internet. For years I've wrestled with this alter ego, doing everything in my power to burn any trace of it I could find. But when I reclaimed my Nintendo DSi, my first instinct was to share everything on it. Oh, how wrong I was to do so. Footnote Studio, an animation software exclusive to the platform, was the breeding ground for this abomination. And there's no chance for me to pretend like I never never used the software, for I already showed it at the end of my video on the DSi. So here we are. Pandora's box has been opened by my hands, and just like the curses that were unleashed onto humanity, the only way to move past what I've uncovered is to normalize it among all of you. So naturally, the first question we need to answer is this. What exactly was Race the Hedgehog? This is an artist's impression of the character, which I spent 50 Australian dollars on. I'm not joking. This was an actual purchase I made for this video. Please support me on Patreon. Anyway, to make sure this artist artwork was a truly accurate depiction of Race the Hedgehog, I needed to be very specific about how he looked, which required me to detail every quirk of the character's design. That being said, I also needed to recognize that I am biased against my creation, so I couldn't trust any of my personal beliefs about race. Instead, I did what research I could using the unholy animations I created between 2009 and 2011 in Flipnote Studio. What follows is everything about the character I could uncover. We already know his name, and that he's an anthropomorphic hedgehog most similar to Sonic, who many of us are already familiar with. His gender is also confirmed to be male. There's no definite indication of his height, but it is reasonable to assume that he and Sonic are equally tall. The most noticeable visual differences between the two are that Race is red, does not have a muzzle, and his torso is white with a black lowercase r and full stop on it. There is also evidence to suggest that he is not biological in nature, and as an android myself, my disappointment is palpable. Because Race is an android, we immediately have to question how dangerous he is. And the answer? Well, very very, especially since his abilities aren't well documented. He is definitely able to instantly charge and shoot lasers from the center of his gloves, which are capable of destroying matter when focused and burning matter when not. But these circular regions on Race's gloves are also described as any and every weapon you could think of. How helpful. So what, he can summon a spoon out of his hands? Wait, no, he's seen using a regular spoon. This just opens up a massive rabbit hole. Regardless, he is extremely dangerous, even if he only uses lasers as a weapon. And if you need evidence, here are some stats that's courtesy of my younger self. I don't know what these levels are relative to, but here we can see that Race has infinite defense and laser power, which I find hard to believe, extremely high speed, high weapon damage, medium body damage, and low earthquake damage. Yeah, he can summon targeted red energy earthquakes by slamming his feet on the ground. Who cares about logic? But so long as you're not getting in a fight with him, what is Race like? Well, he's described on two separate occasions as serious, daring, cool, and immortal. Oh, no wonder he found his way back to me. He can't die. Why did that have to be in his description? <sighs> 
Moving on. He shares the same birthday and month as me, but doesn't have a listed year. Since he's an android, his birthday isn't that helpful, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he matures at the exact same rate as me, and by 2010, you would be dealing with someone that is mentally 12 years old. Definitely the kind of person that should be given ultimate power. Oh, and for some reason there are clones of him, but they're mostly irrelevant. Lil Race is the first one, and as his name would imply, he is smaller than Race. There are also two other clones, and I'm not even going to name them because they don't ever do anything. They really do appear just one or two times and stand around menacingly. <sighs> yes, Jack Six is a clone of me. I didn't ask for this, okay? This is just a massive coincidence. Let's just get into some rapid fire facts. Keep in mind that none of this was ever planned by younger me. All of these character traits have come about after the fact, and I now have to make do with my poor decision making from the past. Race owns a pair of glasses which make his eyes even more digital, as well as multiple pairs of shoes. And although he's seen leaking color one time, he can't be made out of glass because that doesn't make any sense. This guy's made out of glass. He also has on him a Nintendo DSi of his own and a bomb defusal kit? Just don't question it. He owns some vehicles as well, and this in 350 Z and a cart with Sonic 99 written on it. All red, of course. And he's only been seen eating hollow square shaped cereal, which is apparently nutritious enough to allow him to compete in the Winter Olympics. Finally, he isn't good at operating on people, has nightmares about progress bars or something, is easily startled by sudden entrances, and was trapped in some shoddily made Aperture Science themed laboratory but escaped. That's it. That's all we can know about Race the Hedgehog. Anything else that could remotely add to his character is non existent, either because it actually never existed or because I burned it. This is all we've got. And because there's nothing left, I think I'm justified in giving this character design what it deserves. The most brutal dressing down I've ever handed out to anything on my channel. And it goes like this. I've already made it very clear, and there's no sugarcoating my sentiment. Race the Hedgehog is an awful, offensive, shameful, and heinous bastardization of what a character should be. There are, objectively, no redeeming qualities here. And I'm going to prove it. Let's start with the biggest problem. It's a Sonic OC. Original characters tend to be the laughing stock of the internet. It is a term used to describe characters that are the opposite of their designation. They take heavy inspiration from already existing characters and directly modify them to be different enough but not original compared to the original. Because of the minimal effort required to make them, they are commonly laughed at for their poor quality. And there's no other fandom that excels in the mass production of OCs than the Sonic fandom. The cast of Sonic characters is already so vast and filled with common features, such as the species of a character being in their name and these highly recognizable conjoined eyes, that it gave people the bright idea to create their own characters. After all, there are so many examples available. Race the Hedgehog is just another to add to the pile. But not all Sonic OCs are bad. There are some with actual effort put into them, designed from their conception to provide an experience for their prospective viewers. Those that aren't are often self-inserts, defined as characters that partially or wholly represent their creator. Things are not going well for Race in this department, as he was an identity, I assume. I used this identity to do things I wanted to do at the time, possess character traits that were specific to myself, and speak in place of me. By all accounts, race is a self-insert. Additionally, there's a particular kind of self-insert that's even more egregious, known as the Mary or Marty suit. This refers to self-inserts that have little to no character flaws, none of which impact them in any meaningful way, and may possess extreme powers that negate potential consequences and remove tension from whatever situation they are in. Race the Hedgehog has lasers that come out of his hands, and it is explicitly written that he is cool and immortal. I don't think I need to elaborate any more than that. Okay, fine. Race is a Sonic OC and a Marty suit. What else could potentially save this character design? Well, even with no backstory, hardly any documented events, and no interesting details shown off screen, some people are able to look past these pitfalls simply if the character looks nice. Just have an interesting visual style, give it a bit of flair, mix it up with a few accessories, and you're good to please the lowest common denominator. Too bad I couldn't even draw him right. What's going on with these quills. Why are they always pointing to the side? That's not where the nose goes. Move it up. Has anyone questioned why he doesn't have a muzzle yet? His torso and his head are exactly the same shape. Why do his shoes change shape between Sonic shoes and boots? And why do they point outward all the time? What is going on with those hands? Do you even know how to draw fingers? Even if we decide that we shouldn't be holding my artistic skills from ages 11 to 13 to account, Race the Hedgehog is not a visually interesting character. He is too much of a carbon copy of Sonic. 
You want me to prove that? You want me to prove that? I'll show you right now just how shameless this ripoff really is. Here we are in Paint.net, my image editor of choice, and we have this clip art of Sonic the Hedgehog loaded in. We're going to see just how similar Race is to Sonic. The fewer actions I perform and the less effort this takes, the worse the character is. I'm using a plugin called Conditional Hue Saturation, which allows me to change specific regions by color rather than having to select them manually. I'm going to use this to set the quill and body color of Sonic to red and fiddle with the saturation a little bit to make it seem more accurate. Note that Race doesn't have a skin color. Those parts of him are pure white. So now I'll do the same thing again, but for those regions, removing all saturation and increasing the brightness. Now, if we were using the modern form of Sonic rather than this classic one, there would be buckles on his shoes, which would also need to be colored red because in Flipnote Studio, yellow doesn't exist. We would also have to remove all color from the eyes by painting over them with black and darken the nose in a similar manner. And now comes the hardest part, removing the muzzle. To make it easier for myself, first I'll fill this area with the base color of race. Then I'll need to remove the separation between the muzzle and the rest of the head. Because everything here is a solid color, we can easily paint over it. But if it wasn't, we would have to do lots of manual retouching with the clone stamp tool. Race needs a place on his gloves to shoot his lasers from. So I'll need to draw in a circle that matches the outline width of the rest of the hands. It doesn't matter if it's not a perfect circle, as long as it roughly matches the orientation of the hands. From what I've seen, race doesn't have back quills, so we'll need to remove those. This is a simple erase operation, but I will need to use multiple brush sizes to not make a mess. And finally comes the point where I'll need to put the lowercase r and full stop on Race's torso. I'm fortunate enough to have the artistic skill necessary to simply draw it on, but for modern Sonic, we would have to type the r and dot and then stretch them to fit the torso using a separate plugin. So in total, this took six actions on my part. Although we could technically group all the changes made with the conditional hue saturation plugin, bringing that down to five. Actually, we could also group the glove and torso changes since they were both drawn on, leaving us with four. Technically, the removal of the muzzle was drawn on as well, so we can whittle that number down to three. And if either Race's muzzle or back quills were hidden, we could rule them out, meaning that at minimum, only two actions are required to convert Sonic into Race. Absolutely unforgivable. Well, there you have it. My creation, as awful as it is. I've explained everything and torn it to shreds, all for your viewing pleasure. And yet, I can't shake the feeling that this isn't enough, that I still can't come back from this. There's something else I need to do before this can be water under the bridge. Wait, that's it. This video, it will only reach so many people. But these animations, I can use them to warn even more people of my mistakes so that they don't make them either. Flipnote Studio used to connect to a proprietary service called Flipnote Hatena, where users could upload their animations for anybody else to see. Much like the Miiverse, which would come later, people had the ability to like, or in this case, give stars to posts and leave comments. It was the sole reason I made these animations in the first place. And it's not entirely gone either. Flipnote Hatena did shut down on May 31st, 2013, but a couple of people captured the data that was being sent to it before it shut down and reconstructed it from the ground up. Pseudo Memo is the culmination of these efforts and you can connect to it by changing the DNS settings on your DSI, once again allowing you to post your animations. My DSI appears to already be configured to connect to Pseudo Memo. These animations, they weren't made to be hidden away. They were made to be seen. And now they can be educational tools too. I know exactly what I have to do now. Ah, a new visitor. Welcome to my museum. Who am I? <laughs> well, my name is Race the Hedgehog, and I am a curator of long lost art. These works date all the way back to 2009 and the early 2010s. Now, I may not be in my youth anymore, but through these animations, you have the opportunity to see what that was like. Why don't you take a look around? Oh, you want to know what happened to me? <sighs> Yes, I was lost and homeless for 11 years, and no one had the decency to declare me a missing person. But I'm willing to look past that now, for I have a stable job here, overseeing this collection. I really hope you like the artworks. But first, the admission fee, please. Great, thank you. Before you go in though, if you happen to see Jack 5 anywhere, well, I think you'll know what to do when you see him. All right, off you go now. It's been a full day already. Wait, no, it's been more than a month? How have we not heard anything? We can't rush this. The whole point was to get Jack 5 to quit on his own accord. I thought you said this will put him out of commission, right then and there. And yet here we are, waiting for him to do it himself. Unless you want to cause real trouble, you need to be patient. It shouldn't be much longer now. Oh, great timing. We have some news. This better be good. What? A new video? No, no, no. How could he recover from that? I can't move while you can see me. Show me the video. 
Well, that's disappointing. Is it now? At this point, we've gotten nowhere. I went through all that trouble getting that black box just for you, and in the end, it only made him go quiet for a little bit? I guess we have to move on to the next part of my plan. Oh, there's more now, is there? Okay, fine. I'll play along once more, but if this doesn't result in us taking over the channel, you won't be seeing the likes of me again. We will take control eventually. There's no question about it. But if you don't help me, you won't get a part in what I'll be doing. Now take me to the other room. We need to scheme for our next big break. This video is dedicated to Frosty YT, JLX to non-actual name, Alexa, and Snartle for funding this channel. Looks like you guys have been supplied with a fresh batch of lore. Time to go wild with speculation.